Hey Travis. Hey Steven. <laughs> All right, we were here just seconds ago. Now we're gonna answer another question in a different yeah. video. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's get right to the question that we're gonna be asking today. And that is, if God took one of Adam's ribs to make Eve, why do guys still have the same number of ribs? Good question. And you're kind of kicking a hornet's nest here because because it gets to Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Okay. And there are all sorts of debates in-house among Christians about how best to interpret those chapters. Great, so now we're gonna kick a hornet's nest in the Christian community, as well as help try to advise people who are outside of the community. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm gonna solve that problem by just ignoring the hornet's nest. All Christians agree on, when it comes to Genesis 1, 2, and 3, that it is, in some sense, a theological account of the origin of humanity. That is to say that Genesis 1, 2, and 3 are not just there to tell us what happened, but they're there to help us make sense of what it means to be a human being. Okay. It's not just a, hey, here's what happened, but here's why this happened, and here's how you should live in light of it. And okay. so what we see in Genesis 1 is that human beings are made in the image of God. Genesis 2 sort of reiterates what Genesis 1 says, which is that God takes the dust of the earth and he forms Adam and he makes Adam in his image. Okay. And so when we get to the creation of Eve, Eve is not a separate creation from Adam, but God takes one of the ribs of Adam and forms Eve from it. And that's not there to tell you why men do or don't have the same number of ribs as women. I think sometimes we can assume that the Bible authors are ignorant in ways that's just not true. Like, okay. not to be gross, but the Bible authors know what skeletons look like. They've seen more dead bodies than most of us will see in our whole lives. That's Because fair. they grow up yeah. in a society where they're surrounded by that. Sure. They know that men and women have the same number of ribs. They're okay. not ignorant to that. But what they're saying in saying that Eve has been created from Adam is that they're saying that just as much as Adam is in God's image, just as much as man is in God's image, woman is in God's image too. So they're saying that the same stuff that Adam is made from, Eve is made from. It's, it's not a biological statement. It's a theological statement. It's a way of saying men and women are equal. They equally share the image of God. They're equally created by God to, to steward God's creation. That they share the same stuff. They're made of the same things. Which is why when we talk about marriage, we talk about two becoming one flesh. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the two that have been separated in creation being united again. And so when you ask the question, well, why don't men have one less rib than women? It's because that's not really the point of Genesis 2. It's, it's not telling us anything about anatomy or the skeletal system. It's telling us something deeper. Okay. It's, it's telling us that we as men and women both are equally made in the image of God by a God who loves us and cares for us. Is Genesis a metaphor then? So I would say it is... Metaphor is probably not the right word. Okay. Yeah. I think Genesis is a story of our origins that makes helps us make sense of our present time. Okay. So when we tell stories about where we came from, mm -hmm. when we talk about the founding of our nation, or when we talk about how our parents met, okay. we don't just tell those stories for no reason. right? We talk about the founding of our nation or the the history of our family because that in some sense helps us make sense of where we are now. Like my, my Yaya came over from Greece right? okay. and, and her parents who came over from Greece, uh, her father in particular recorded his whole life story of coming over to America and working to save up enough money to bring his family over mm -hmm. person by person over the course of, I think it was like five to seven years. He, he doesn't just record that for no reason. He wants his family to know where they came from so that they can make sense of where they are. And in the same way, I think Genesis is a true account. But it's not just there to say this is what happened. It's there to say this is why things are the way they are. Okay. Right? So Genesis 2 tells us that, that we're made in God's image. Mm -hmm. But Genesis 3 tells us that that image has been distorted along with all of creation by sin. And so it's not just history. It's, it's not less than history, but it's more than history. It's there to orient us in the world today. 
I like that. It's yeah. not less than history. Mm -hmm. It's more than history. Right. So it's it's a there's a richness behind it that can't be found in in other things mm -hmm. um, because of the fact that the creation itself. We believe that the creation. Uh, occurred. Mm -hmm. um, there are certainly, like you said, just a a, a ton of hornets' nests surrounding right. um, th the the characteristics of creation. Mm -hmm. um, however, we Christians do align on the fact that God did create the earth. Yes. Um, the amount of time that He used to do that sometimes can be in question, mm -hmm. and 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 some of those things among theologians. However. We do know that God created the earth. He created man and woman. But the deeper truth, as I'm understanding what you're saying, mm -hmm. is, is, is one that's foundational to our faith. And that is that women are not, are not made for man. They are drawn um, from the same stuff so that they are both image bearers of right. God. They're both equal. It's a statement of dignity. It's a statement of equality. It's a, it's, it's a way of saying men and women are on equal footing and equally worthy of value and respect and dignity. All right. Thanks for sharing that one. Um, we'll see you next time for our next question.